There are lots of different cues you can use when you go down into a squat, when you're squatting in general. Uh, it helps to think about certain aspects of your movement. You know, so if you're somebody that struggles with knee valgus or knees collapsing inwards, it's, you know, it makes a lot of sense for you to think knees out, knees out, knees out throughout the whole motion. That kind of helps you uh, focus your body, your nervous system to kind of think about that particular body part and engage whatever structures need to be engaged for you to kind of track those knees outside. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, Van, what do you use? You know, which cues do you, what do you say to yourself when you squat? Because of my fear of lower back injuries before, you know, the scare when I was like 20 years old, um, that loud lower back popping sound that I heard and then subsequent pain in the lower back and weird sensations going down both my legs. Ever since then, you know, it's been my priority to think about the lower back. So when I squat, all I ever think about is flat back, flat back, flat back. And if that, if that particular part of my body is flat, I'm safe, I can push as hard as I can. As soon as I feel deviation from that optimal, you know, lower back uh, position, I just bail on the weight. Uh, or I don't even kind of go up to a certain weight if I cannot stabilize that pelvic, that lower back pelvis kind of region. Um, I almost kind of feel, as soon as it starts to threaten, I kind of bail. This morning, however, I threw in another cue usually something that I, 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 I don't usually have a second or a third cue. The only other thing I might use is chin up. You know, I'm one of those guys that likes to look down. Um, and I think that's because of my anterior pelvic tilt and I don't want to like too much bias that lower back arch because, you know, too much arching is as bad as too much flexing. You know, you, you know in your lower back, you need to have some sort of a neutral spine when you go down. So I'm always kind of like, Arch your back, arch your back, you know, fight the forces that want to kind of ran you over. Sometimes if I look up, I kind of, uh, it's like a seesaw. I can, I can control the other aspect because when I look down, I engage the abs. When I look up, I further engage the posterior chain, the upper back, all that stuff. So if I really, really look up, you know, it's like even more of an arch in the lower back. If I look down, so the head position is kind of like a counterweight to my obsession with the lower back arching. Um, so sometimes I, I use the head positioning to kind of gauge of what's going on. This morning, however, I used another cue. And that cue was uh, put the weight on the outside of my foot. So for some time now, I've kind of been on and off thinking about what's happening to my feet. Um, ever since I stopped playing basketball, I feel like the strength in my feet has deteriorated. And because I squat a lot, because I deadlift a lot, uh, I feel like my flat-footedness uh, has become a thing. You know, before I, I used to have quite, you know, big arches or whatever, healthy arches, lots of running, lots of bouncing on my balls on my feet. So all these kind of intrinsic muscles, which I can't freaking begin to name, uh, in the foot were kind of strong and they were they were kind of bouncy and, 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 you know, healthy. And then you start kind of doing a lot of weightlifting and it's just constant force on those on that tailless bone and whatever other structures that are kind of collapsing when it, when it comes to flat feet. This morning I was like, okay, it's an opportunity to kind of move weight in a different way. It's a morning session. I'm not going to do a lot of volume or intensity or anything like that. So I came in, I'm like, let's, let's try that. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, it feels very solid to have the weight of your, of your body on the outside of your foot. What that does, it kind of brings the uh, the great toe ball of your foot, I don't know what you are else to call it, it brings it down. So it automatically creates this tripod position where it's like, you know, the, the great toe and the fifth toe uh, all, of, all of a sudden become more in contact with the ground and the heel. It's like a tripod, right, on, on, on each foot. Um, and what that does, it sets up this chain reaction, this um, domino effect upstream where your knees start to track out, you engage the glute medius, and all of a sudden, I felt at least I was a little bit more upright. So it's like a cascade of things. Even though the hips are kind of like, you know, the, the don, the, the, the boss of the, of, of the squat and how we move. Um, simply by thinking about where we are, you know, uh, putting pressure on our feet, we'll have that chain reaction upstream. It's kind of like an easy tactile um, thing that you can feel uh, 
really easily. Sometimes some, some of these cues are like really hard to process. There's, I've, I've heard a thousand different cues to think about, you know, think about the belt, think about pushing out, think about pushing in, think about air in the belly, think about no air in the lungs, um, you know, all these sorts of things. And I feel like sometimes if you have, man, if you have more than two cues, man, I don't know what to tell you. It's just way too much going on, man. Like, I don't know. That, that's, that's me anyway. All I ever like to think about is my lower back. Usually, today I was thinking about weight on, on the outside of my, 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 my feet. And even that, I was kind of forgetting about the lower back. It's, it's funny how it works. Like, you, don't, you know, at least for me, I can't do 10 different cues, man. I, that's something I don't like doing. But if you're not so scared about your lower back, um, or you have a bigger priority about your knees tracking out, or your, or your hip positioning, or, or maybe even hip shift, or something like that, you can start thinking about the position of your feet, you know, where the weight is, and maybe there's a discrepancy in there causing your hip shift, causing your uh, ankles to behave in a different way, because you need to understand, like, if, if one foot is getting more pressure, um, or one foot is getting different pressure to the other foot, it only makes sense that you're going to be behaving upstream differently, because it's almost like you are... One foot's on a skateboard and the other foot's on a rock. It's kind of like, you know, two different things. And, you know, it only makes sense that the upstream is going to respond to the situation that's going on down there. So, um, just from doing that uh, little workout, which took freaking less than an hour, I'm feeling fatigue in my right foot. And my right foot is the weaker one. I know it. Like, you know, when it comes to kicking a ball, I'm left-footed. I'm right-handed, but I'm left left-footed. So, I, you know, in basketball, we jump off my left foot. My left foot is just generally the stronger one and um, I'm kind of, you know, there's more dexterity there in a way, right? With the right foot, I always feel like the arch is always collapsing and whatever. And so this little workout has produced freaking doms. I don't even know what freaking muscle it is, man. Like the internal, the medial side of the, the shin. I don't know what those muscles are. It feels like a sole is, but it's probably some sort of a foot inverter. Um, it's fatigued. <laughs> it's fatigued. And so now I'm going to go to a shift, 12 hour shift. And usually when you're, when you're sitting, standing on, on, on your feet for 12 hours, you start to develop foot fatigue. And I know at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I can feel my arches feeling sore because I'm constantly at work fighting that. Uh, I guess that's the one, the one cue I use when I go to nursing. It's like, you have an arch um, in your feet. <laughs> I don't think about my lower back because I'm not squatting at work. Anyway, something to, uh, to ponder about. You know the the effect your foot has upstream. It's something something uh, to think about. Something interesting, I think. Um, maybe it will kind of stick around in my mind a little longer um, in my kind of main squatting session. Anyway, guys, let me get out of here. It's raining. It's cold. It's not really that cold. It's actually not not a bad morning. It's just lots of rain. Um, but anyway, let me get to work. Peace out, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.